This video was brought to you by Squarespace. What's that? You need a website, but you don't know how to build one yourself? Hmm. Yeah, that's tricky. You know, I I'm envisioning some sort of, uh, space. You know, one, one that's kind of, uh, I don't know, square. Building a website using Squarespace is so easy, anyone can do it. I built my site, Arlo Recommends, using a basic template. I messed around with it a bit and suddenly I was done. I had a site and it looked great. Making content is just as easy. I can format text and images and any other embedded stuff however I want, schedule everything to go out later, have it push automatically to social media so I don't have to do a thing. If I ever need more, I can dip into Squarespace's catalog of powerful extensions and they're very nifty sweet of analytics are always there for me to browse. To try out Squarespace for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. And now for today's recommendation, this collection of Aphex Twin songs arranged using the Super Mario 64 sound font. Okay, I know I've already recommended songs made to sound like Mario 64, but On Forward put together an entire album of their Aphex Twin covers, and I can not stop listening to it. It's pretty much the perfect collection of perfect music. I don't, I don't know if it can get better than this. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now, I'm envisioning a different kind of space. One that's over here where the video is. All right, Mr. Arlo, Princess Peach Showtime and one Reese's comes to 67.23. Okay. You know, my daughter is really looking forward to this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, I should have asked. Uh, would you like a protection plan? Mine too. What was that? My daughter too. I also have a daughter and she is excited to play this game. Oh. Well, uh, do, do you think you might want a protection? She's a sweet girl. Real sweet girl. Her name is Rebecca, and this is all she wanted. It's her birthday today, and this is all she wanted. That's great. Happy birthday to her. So it's $3.99. She says I don't have to buy her a present for the next 10 years if I just get her Princess Peach Showtime this year. Are you not going to buy her presents for the next 10 years? No, of course I am. I I'm just, that's how much she wants this. H how much she wants to play Princess Peach Showtime. I love her so much. She's a precious angel to me. Uh, Rebecca sounds like a really sweet girl. She is. So the game and the candy is 67.23, please. I lied, it's for me. Look, man, I- It's for me because I'm a game reviewer. Oh, really? Yeah. And if I don't do this review, they'll fire me. Uh... I work for IGN. That's where I review games. Oh, cool. I'm on IGN sometimes. I'll have to look you up. Don't look me up. My work is terrible. In fact, I think they're gonna fire me anyway. My work just hasn't been up to snuff. And I was hired recently, so I feel like I'm first on the chopping block during the next round of layoffs, which is inevitable. You know how things have been going in the industry. I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety about it, so I really need to review this game and make it really good so I don't get fired and I can continue to provide for my family. I have to provide for, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, that's why I'm buying Princess Peach Showtime. Look, my guy, it, it honestly does not matter to me why you're buying the game. You could be buying it just for you, for all I care. That would be totally cool. I mean, I'll probably give it a go when my daughter's done with it. It looks fun. It does look fun. Yes, and I really like the costumes. They're fantastic. So, don't worry about it. All right, so that'll be 67.23. Actually, how much was that protection plan again? Rebecca spills a lot of food on my games, her games. I've been waiting for Peach to get her own game for a really long time. Not because I'm a huge fan of the character or anything, but because I've always loved when side characters get the spotlight in games and in shows and movies. It lets you see things from a new perspective. It pulls the audience into new situations. Luigi's Mansion proved that a Mario game doesn't need to star Mario to be a winner. And since then, the audience has only become more and more receptive to the idea of more side character spin-offs, so to speak. And one could easily argue that Peach has been the most deserving of this 
this treatment. She's normally the one being rescued, and sometimes she does get to help out, which is great, but giving her an entire game has always seemed like such a great opportunity to dramatically shift gears and provide a game with a much different feel from regular Mario. It would also be an opportunity to flesh out a character that typically comes across as a little one-dimensional. Now, don't get me wrong, I do also really like Peach. At the very least, there's the fact that I've been playing games with her in them since I was a kid. The familiarity alone has been enough to keep me crossing my fingers for a full Peach adventure, but the first three Paper Marios have also helped to flesh out her character a little more. And even if other series haven't really let this side of her personality come out, you might even say that Paper Mario Peach is simply her own character, it's all still part of my own headcanon. I've known Peach for a long, long time, and I've always known she has great potential. Now, it is true that she technically already got her own game, but Super Princess Peach never really looked that appealing to me. It felt a little gross that when Nintendo finally decided to give her a game, they went straight to the stereotypes. I, I suppose for comedic effect? Her power is her ability to have extreme mood swings? Really? <laughs> Really? How many women were in the room when you came up with this? <laughs> Truthfully. No, I've been waiting for them to give it another shot. A real shot. Especially with today's tech. What could a real Peach game look like? Not just a 2D side-scroller on the DS, but a modern AAA title. Well, we've finally got one. Peach finally got her own game on Switch. And I would say I'm... mixed on the final result. I am actually quite torn in many ways. This might even be the most torn I have been on a Nintendo game since, I don't know, ever? Conceptually, Princess Peach Showtime is perfect. Honestly, I don't think you could ask for a more perfect scenario in terms of style and theming. Peach is invited to this beautiful theater where these little people called Thetes are all about putting on plays. It's their whole thing. But before the show can get started, everything is derailed by a... witch? Sorceress? Magically inclined person? Or possibly ghost? Whatever. Derailed by an evil lady named Grape. She locks the doors and hijacks all the plays. So it's Peach's job to perform in the plays herself and save everyone. And she dons 10 different costumes to take on 10 different roles, each with their own gameplay styles. Because Peach has historically been so one note, it's immediately refreshing to see her in these different outfits, acting out these different parts. There's a real novelty to it, just in terms of sheer personality. Everything from her facial expressions to her animations is different, and it feels like a real exploration of her character. She's normally so dainty that it's fun to see her lose herself in each role and take on a very active heroic demeanor without ever losing the essence of what makes her Princess Peach. It really does just feel like we get to see a bunch of new sides of the character that have always been there under the surface. It's cool that she likes being dainty, that's who she is, but she's still comfortable playing the part of a ninja or a superhero when she wants to. And again, thematically, it all just works so well. The whole glamorous theatrical angle plays perfectly into her usual aesthetic. There's an element of magic and whimsy running throughout the whole game that feels so right in a story centered on Peach. Peach is all about her beautiful castle and her elegant dresses and being surrounded by people. So this environment works so much better than if you just stuck her into the kinds of situations Mario might find himself in. The game is unapologetically Peach. And I'm very happy that she's been given her own villain, her own evil counterpart, rather than just pitting her against Bowser or something, or using some other pre-existing Mario baddie. She's not fighting the same old fight, and Mario isn't even in the picture, which I really appreciate. This is her thing, full stop. I'm still not a fan of the name Grape, though. <laughs> Truth be told. I mean, I get it, Sweet Peach and Sour Grape, it's just like you say, my favorite villain is Bowser. People are like, yeah. But then you say, my favorite villain is Grape. And people are like, what? <laughs> It's okay though. Grape doesn't have a whole lot going for her, and at first her motivation isn't actually clear, but by the end that motivation kind of reveals itself and it retroactively feels very clever. Then her minions, the Sour Bunch, they're pretty fun. They're a fairly basic collection of baddies, but they've got some cool theming. A lot of them have this marionette puppet kind of thing going on, which is visually interesting, and also allows Peach to destroy them and break them into little pieces without it being, you know, 
too gruesome. <laughs> but let's talk about Peach's different roles, because that's what the game is really about. It's not even costumes, as one might initially assume. I think it's less that she's donning these magical outfits and transforming, and more that she's embodying the spirit of these theatrical parts. I think the official word they use is ensemble, so I guess I can use that. Well, you've got 10 different ensembles, and each one has three levels. A lot of these setups mainly boil down to running around and attacking, but having other elements kind of built around them. Swordfighter Peach can attack with her sword, but she also has this bullet time thing where she can counter after avoiding an attack. Kung Fu Peach can kick, but in these stages the enemies are designed so that they crash into each other. Mighty Peach can punch, but she can also pick up objects and throw them. So for ensembles like these, it comes down to the stage design to keep things interesting. But then other ensembles bring in gameplay that's much more unique. Patisserie Peach doesn't really fight at all, but instead mixes up cookies and decorations decorates cakes, and these feel more like a collection of mini-games. Figure Skater Peach naturally skates around, so her movement is very different, and she both fights and dances using her spins and jumps. Mermaid Peach literally only sings, and this allows her to control fish, moving them around the screen. And of course, Detective Peach has you walking around and inspecting stuff, looking for clues and figuring out what people or objects to call out. So there's a pretty big variety of activities between these 10 ensembles. And and I do really like variety. I love the different roles, the different settings, the different objectives. Constantly changing things up keeps the experience fresh, keeps it moving. You know that's my thing. There's no one activity that goes on too long. The problem with these different ensembles though, and therefore a very big problem with the game, is that they're not all that much fun. This is Princess Peach Showtime's absolute biggest weakness. It offers a lot of gameplay variety, but it falls into a very common trap that you see in a lot of games of this type. It's a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none situation. Polishing gameplay and making it consistently fun is hard, and when you spread yourself thin in the gameplay department, it's that much harder to ensure that the whole experience stays fun all the time. Some ensembles are simply more fun to play than others. And even within each ensemble, you've got multiple gameplay modes, and those themselves can also be all over the place. I would actually say there is very little in the game that feels downright good to play. There's just about nothing that I find myself completely comfortable and satisfied with which is extremely unusual for a Nintendo game, where gameplay and feel are usually priority number one. Plenty of stuff comes close to being flat out fun. Much of it is perfectly serviceable, but then there's so much that just feels clunky and sluggish. It's simply not fun to control. And I probably don't need to tell you that when it comes to video games, being fun is pretty darn important. It has to feel right when you pick up that controller. And a lot of the time, Princess Peach Showtime just doesn't feel right. It's never downright terrible, and of course I kinda got used to it as I went along, but it never quite clicked. The bosses are also wildly inconsistent, and this is particularly disappointing because bosses in Mario and Mario-adjacent games are usually so good, but most of these are… fine. One or two, I would say, are downright bad. Poorly designed with poorly conveyed objectives. So that's a bummer. And then there's the elephant in the room, the difficulty. Or rather, the simplicity. Because it's not just about how easy the objectives are, as some people imagine. It's about how engaging the game is. There's been a whole lot of discourse going around, especially after the demo dropped. A lot of people, myself included, have been afraid that the game would be far too easy and simple for adults to enjoy. And then that, of course, gets a lot of people insisting that this is a game for kids and it's perfectly acceptable for it to be as easy as it wants. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing here, it's kind of a bigger discussion for another day, but to touch on it briefly, I do think a game can be so easy that it hinders the fun factor. Nintendo makes games that are fun for kids and adults alike. Anyone can pick up a Mario game and have fun with it. Easy to pick up, hard to master. That's Nintendo. 
Showtime is not like that. This game is extremely easy. It does seem to have been designed with little kids in mind, rather than an audience made up of both kids and adults. But even an easy game can be fun as long as it's still interesting, as long as the gameplay is otherwise engaging. And truth be told, this gameplay, along with not being very polished, is also aggressively simple much of the time. There isn't much variation in how to accomplish your goals, and it never really asks much of the player. The good news is, if you were put off by the demo, the game is a lot better than that. I honestly think Nintendo shot themselves in the foot with that demo. It should have included a few more levels, because it made the game look even easier and simpler than it actually is. The full thing is better, but it's still kinda pushing what I'm able to handle. It's not too simple or easy to enjoy entirely, but it's knocking on that door some of the time. If the gameplay was more refined, maybe it would make the simplicity less of an issue, or maybe if it was a little more engaging, it would make the lack of polish less of an issue. But instead, the game kind of skirts this line where it's just fun enough to keep going, but for how long? Well, we'll talk more about my overall thoughts at the end. Because now I want to tell you why Princess Peach Showtime is enjoyable despite the lacking gameplay. Going in, my biggest wish was that this would be one of those Nintendo games with a ton of heart, loads of visual elements, just exploding with charm, because I know that that can help elevate a project that otherwise struggles in the gameplay department. Yoshi's Crafted World was a little bit like that for me. The gameplay was fine, I did enjoy it, but it was really all about the fun visuals and all the effort they put into the overall presentation. And I'm happy to say that yes, this is the case here. Showtime's presentation is fantastic. Every level is a unique scenario. The game doesn't just reuse the same assets over and over again. You're always coming up against something new. And since everything is made to look like a stage production, this means elaborate set pieces that constantly change. Effects going off all over the place. The feats are everywhere. They're a constant part of the production and they help you out and you help them out and they comment on everything. I really do love their designs. I think they're really cute and it's nice that they're always there, keeping you company, playing along with whatever scene is unfolding. Even if it doesn't always play out smoothly, there are all these different exciting scenarios you find yourself in. Lots of high speed chase sequences with lots of visual flair. And I really do love how hard the game leans into the play aspect. There are certainly some sequences that push the boundaries of what you might actually expect to see during a stage show, but for the most part, they've done a great job of making all the elements feel like real play elements. Lighting is used very strategically, especially spotlights, which can draw the viewer's attention wherever they want. Even as the feats act all distressed, they never drop the melodramatic overacting, like they're all playing along. Even the Sour Bunch's unwanted intrusion feels like part of the story. One of my favorite examples is how whenever there are ghosts or any kind of spirits, they look like they're being projected onto the backdrop. I just can't get over how clever this is. So it's all visually thematic, but even further, it also has kind of a meta quality to it, where it's not hard to imagine that literally the entire game is actually one big stage play that Peach is the star of. Like even in world, this could all just be a production and maybe we're watching it along with Mario and all their friends. It's kind of up to you to consider it, you know? And I think that's a really fun angle. The whole thing has just got this very exciting energy. Peach has taken on these roles and dropped into these plays, and the Thetes are always leading her along from sequence to sequence. They often run along with you between scenes, and something about this just feels great. It's like, even though this game doesn't have the best gameplay, even though it's kind of unpolished and overly simplistic, I just can't help but get sucked into the imagination aspect. I get pulled into these roles along with Peach. The Thetes, they're all waiting for a hero to help them, and you're that hero. It kind of plays out like an interactive theme park ride. It's less about the challenge and more about feeling like you're really there, taking down these big baddies, doing all this amazing stuff. Sometimes it actually feels like the simplicity helps in this regard, because of course all this comes effortlessly to the hero. I'm playing a role here. Of course the fabled sword fighter is going to defeat every enemy, no problem. Of course the power suit wearing superhero is gonna effortlessly smash every every obstacle. And this right here is where I am most torn on the game. On the one hand, 
I don't think any of Nintendo's games should be aimed at kids and only kids. Because why limit your game like that? Again, anyone can play Mario because it's got something to offer everyone. That's Nintendo's whole thing. A little kid can enjoy a game that an adult can enjoy. But if you make a game too simple, then only the kid can enjoy it. Put on Mario Kart, a toddler and their parent will have fun. But give that same pair one of those little play sets where you put the shapes through the holes, <laughs> only the toddler is gonna have fun with it. No, I'm not looking for Dark Souls here. I'm just looking for enough to grab onto while I enjoy the fun visuals. And like, there's definitely something particularly frustrating that Peach's game specifically had to be the one aimed at kids. There are so many adults who have been waiting for this. The audience for a Peach-centered adventure extends so far beyond little kids. It feels like Nintendo doesn't really understand that that audience exists. And maybe I'm looking too deep into it, but I can't help but feel like Oh, so Peach gets her own game, but Peach is a princess and a girl. So the only people who will want to play that game is little girls. And girls don't play video games, so we have to make it super easy and kiddish. Do you know what I mean? Like. Kirby and Yoshi games, they're more kid-friendly, easier on the whole, but in most cases, still engaging enough to keep adults entertained. And they always include plenty of tricky challenges, especially in the late and post game. But not Peach. Out of all the colorful, kid-friendly games Nintendo puts out, this exact one is the one that specifically focuses on little, little kids first and foremost. Why? Well, it must be because Peach, because that's how Nintendo views Peach's fans. And I don't like that idea. Insert tearing noise. On the other hand though, I can't deny that in being aimed more at kids, this game does accomplish something unique. A little kid might be able to play Mario, but it might require using modes and characters that let them avoid engaging with much of the game, or they might not be able to actually get that far. Again, Princess Peach Showtime is like an amusement park ride, one that invites you aboard and consistently empowers you, makes you feel like a hero. Its simplicity allows a kid to navigate this world on their own and make their way through this exciting adventure. It lets them have this theatrical, high-quality, Nintendo-style experience without worrying too much about controls and difficulty. Kids will enjoy it because the game is unabashedly their game. I can complain about it being too simple and alienating older Peach fans, but it doesn't care. <laughs> it's too busy letting little kids have the time of their lives, giving them an experience that they might not have had until years later when their gaming skills were developed enough. And I can respect that. I actually love the idea of a kid getting into video games precisely because this game caters to them at such an unusually young age. When most games aimed at them are simple educational apps based on kids shows that they play on their tablets. Now I will say, I still think the execution here is lacking. It's usually a game for kids, but there are plenty of difficulty spikes I could see being a problem. Certain bosses and sequences that I could see a kid really struggling with. Also, it's that thing where Nintendo loves to make games for kids that also rely heavily on dialogue. Gameplay-wise, it feels like a game for five-year-olds, yet some parts basically require the ability to read. Plus, a huge amount of the dialogue happens in real time without waiting for you to hit the button to dismiss it, and it goes by so fast that even an adult might struggle to keep up. Like, what is that about? <laughs> is it for kids or not? It's kind of annoying how inconsistent the age appropriateness is sometimes. And as we've already established, inconsistency is a big problem with Princess Peach Showtime overall. It's just not very well tuned. Some stuff is fun enough, other stuff isn't. Some stuff works, other ideas fall a little flat. But one more big thing the game has going for it is how it unfolds. I mentioned how the demo didn't properly represent the game, and that's because it offered one tiny slice from the very beginning. The whole experience actually gets better and better the more you progress. The first time you use an ensemble, you play what feels more like a tutorial level. It's the second level where things really start to get interesting. The gameplay is slightly more demanding, and the overall theme 
themes are better explored. Even more, things very often take a darker turn. The second sword fighter level takes you through a haunted castle. The second patisserie level introduces a zombie element of all things. The second mermaid level has you facing off against a spooky ghost ship. It's actually really surprising how the themes pretty consistently get a little more dire, and they certainly get a lot more interesting. Then, slight spoiler, I suppose, but the final level for each costume has you rescuing the Sparklas. These are the originators of these roles Peach is taking on. At first, I kind of thought she was just donning costumes and playing parts, but she's actually taking over for these extra skillful feats who have been captured by Grape. And these levels are usually where the game shines brightest. They're weirder and darker than any other levels, taking place in some kind of strange dimensional place. Mechanically, this is where you apply all the concepts established in previous levels, so the difficulty and level of interest is highest here. After rescuing a Sparkla, you then work together to escape, which just feels great. It's you and this revered professional, both being awesome and teaming up against the very last of what the Sour Bunch has to throw at you. These sequences are the culmination of each of the ten different themes, and even if we're not talking about anything mind-blowing, it's still a satisfying way to wrap things up. It's that energy I was talking about, the roleplay, the feeling of flying through this little adventure. And no spoilers, but the game's ending sequence goes a lot harder than I expected. Peach doesn't get games too often, so I love how they made sure that this one came to a very fun conclusion. A few more little things before we wrap this up. The visuals are lovely, but the frame rate suffers as a result. And it's not just that it's slow, it's that it's, what do you know? Inconsistent. Dropped frames are common, giving the game a very choppy look at times. I know this won't matter to everyone, but I do find it kind of annoying. I'm not sure if they needed to lower the visual fidelity slightly or just optimize the game better, but whatever the case, I wish they'd smoothed it over somehow. The music is nice. It's really nice. Some of these themes are very whimsical and well composed. The soundtrack leans more into orchestral arrangements, which I'm not usually as much of a fan of, but it certainly fits the whole theater vibe. No complaints at all here, it's all quite enjoyable, even if nothing like really jumps out at me in particular. Peach's voice is very interesting here. I don't know if it's because of the Mario movie or if they just wanted to do something a little different, but her vocal range is much wider. Peach usually speaks in such a high, almost squeaky voice, but in Showtime, you'll hear lines delivered much, much lower, like way more deep than we're used to. Case closed. The higher up sound is still there sometimes, but not nearly as much. She doesn't use that same falsetto we're used to. She just sounds a lot more like an adult, honestly, <laughs> and I actually kind of like it. She sounds more human, more expressive. It's a better fit for this game, where she's playing with such a wide range of themes and styles. Now, just to say I did it, I'd like to briefly touch on each ensemble and give my thoughts. Sword Fighter Peach. Swinging the sword doesn't feel great at first, but seeing stuff get all slashed up makes up for it a little. The slow motion thing is silly, but it's kind of satisfying to pull off. Visually, the outfit is one of my favorites for sure. She looks awesome. Patisserie Peach. Making cookies isn't super fun. Cake decorating is pretty okay though. It can be kind of a neat little challenge. The outfit is super cute. I particularly love her idol animation. Kung Fu Peach. Swinging on poles and knocking enemies around is satisfying, though the sluggish combat kind of gets in the way. The one-on-one -on -one battles are pretty janky, so I guess I'm not a fan. Detective Peach. I do like how thoroughly different the gameplay is here. It's nothing like the rest of the game. Not fun to replay, but it's kind of cute the first time. Figure Skater Peach. I can't help but notice that it's not as fun and fluid as Ice Flower Mario from Galaxy, but it's still satisfying to glide around and chain together jumps and spins. Definitely one of the better transformations as far as controls go. Cowgirl Peach. Lassoing barrels and chucking them is a lot of fun, though it never lasts long enough. The horseback sequences feel kind of clunky, but at least they're exciting. Visually, this one is very strong. Dashing Thief Peach. It's really just Peach with a grappling hook, I think she could have used more here. More involved hacking might have been nice, but the hook is pretty darn fun to use and offers some more traditional platforming, as well as something akin to puzzles. Love the outfit. Ninja Peach. Stealth is the biggest thing here, and it's unfortunate that it's not particularly well done until the last level. The different ways she sneaks are all funny to see. The camouflage paper, the bamboo shoot underwater, I like it. The running sequences are pretty fun. I love how she runs on the walls, that's cool. Mermaid Mermaid Peach. 
probably the weakest. Controlling fish is an interesting idea, but the execution is very clunky and it's just not very fun. And Mighty Peach, definitely a favorite of mine. Throwing stuff around and beating up big robots is fun, and the visual spectacle is some of the best in the game. I mean, she even gets a little origin story where the scientist powers her up. That's just cute. Finally, I'll mention the amount of content in the game. The main story took me about eight hours to finish, and I didn't really spend any time going back through and grabbing all the collectible little sparkly things. Again, no spoilers, but after the story, you also unlock some other little challenges and collectibles which encourage you to go through the levels again. There are also decorations to purchase for the lobby, as well as outfits both for Peach and her little star friend, Stella, I think. <laughs> and some mini games thrown in there for good measure. So it's not a huge huge amount of content, but it's not an insignificant amount either. It kind of just depends on who you are and what you're getting from the game. It is a relatively short experience overall, but it's one of those games with a lot of heart that they spent a lot of time on, with lots of different set pieces and unique visual elements. It's certainly an experience worth having. That said though, personally, the post-game content didn't really do much to keep me playing because the game itself, well, it it isn't fun enough. None of the gameplay is enjoyable enough to keep me going and wanting to collect everything. I enjoyed myself, sure, but once I rolled the credits, that was kinda it for me. And that's really the thing about Princess Peach Showtime. It's a very confused, inconsistent experience. Where it excels is in its visuals, its energy, its overall spectacle. It feels like a dazzling performance, and it's fun to go along with the characters as they have the time of their lives playing out this fantasy. But the gameplay is also rough and seems to be aimed at a much younger audience, which means that many adults will indeed end up feeling alienated. I'm glad I played it, and I can definitely say that I had a pretty okay okay time, but I also wouldn't have wanted to spend $60 on it if I weren't reviewing it. And I can't say with confidence that I'll find myself playing it again someday. I mean, the biggest thing I can say against it is this. My nephew is about to turn eight. He's been raised on a steady diet of Nintendo games. He loves them all, no matter how easy or kiddish. Mario, Kirby, Yoshi, all of it. But he is just not into this game. And I don't think it's because it stars Peach. He was excited to play the demo, but after that, there just wasn't anything enticing him to keep going. He hasn't even touched the full thing. And in case you haven't put it together yet, he is a kid. But the game is so simple that even a seven-year-old might be too old for it. So really, I'm very torn. I appreciate Princess Peach Showtime for what it is. I did enjoy much of it. In some ways, it's a perfect game for Peach, but in other ways, I find myself wishing for more. I don't know if she'll be starring in more games in the near future, but if she does, I do hope they try to bring the gameplay up to the Nintendo standard and make something that everyone can enjoy. Even 30-something gamer dudes who probably don't deserve it. All right, I can help whoever's next. Oh, hey, it's uh, Arlo, right? Yeah, um... Did Rebecca spill food on your game? Rebecca spilled food on my game. Yeah, okay, I'll help you out. Actually, can I get another Reese's too? 